Okay, well I'm going to uh, remove the leather from the back of this camera and uh, deal with these ice bumps. I'm just checking, sliding my scalpel under the edge of the leather at this end, just seeing what sort of a state it's in, seeing how well it's fixed. I'm just running a sharp screwdriver, small sharp screwdriver underneath that very edge. And I'm being careful to feel for any reluctance for the leather to come away. That wasn't too bad. Now here, I'm levering the leather up as much as cutting underneath it. I'm taking great care to keep a lot of downward pressure on my scalpel to keep that blade hard back against the metal surface, not letting it rise up into the leather because I don't want to cut through the leather. Alright, I've lifted that end. I'm going to attempt to peel that leather back and I'm going to take great care. And if I see any problems, I'll stop. I'm noticing the thickness of the leather and the feel of the leather and to get an indication of how strong it's likely to be and how much it's likely to stand up to this sort of treatment. And the leather is strong. Right, this exposes those Zeiss bumps. And what they consist of, or what's keeping that level up, is this green waxy stuff. which I think technically is probably a soap. You can see by the look of the back of this camera that that leather is effectively extremely well glued down to the back of the camera. I'm leaving leather fibres, this brown stuff is leather fibres, I'm leaving them stuck on the, on the back. The leather is effectively losing its layer. And I'm going to continue peeling it off. The reason I would like to peel it off completely is that when you go to glue the leather back down, if you were to stop at say that point, when you go to glue it down you'd almost inevitably end up with a line visible across the leather where there was a change from where it was glued down originally to where it was glued down 
Yeah, you've re-glued it. Now I'm just watching the edge of that leather there because it looked like it was tending to come apart a bit there. I don't want that. I'm going to make sure we get all of the leather. I'm doing this carefully. I don't want to stretch the leather any more than I have to. Right, we're right up on the corner there now. Now I can see corrosion products down here at the hinge. That tells me that there's more corrosion ice bumps forming under there, so I'll continue this. If that had been clean, if there'd been no bumps to be seen there, I'd stop at this point. Right, I'm just about down to that, so I'm going to use my scalpel again to get underneath the edge of that leather. Often pieces of leather have been skived, which basically means that the edges have been pared back so that the edges are thinner than the centre, so that they'll sit down neatly. And where they've been skived and thinned out, they will of course not be quite so robust. So if I was to just try and force this leather off at this point, I could easily end up tearing it. I'd rather not do that since the object of this exercise is to improve the appearance of the camera, not make it worse. Right, there we have it. A little bit of corrosion product right there. That's where it runs over a rivet. And obviously where those two large bumps were. I'll have to scrape off any loose bits here where it's uh, where we've got glue stuck to it and it's a bit delaminated. That'll have to be all cleaned off. And the camera back itself, well you can see the corrosion products here, I'll clean those out, here, 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 there's nothing really forming in that spot. Now they form wherever there is a rivet. Now we have dissimilar metals here. The back of the camera is aluminium. The rivets will be brass. And basically, the chemicals in the leather will have provided the, well, promoted an electrolytic corrosion, corrosive uh, activity between those dissimilar metals. Probably a little bit of uh, humidity probably wouldn't hurt. That would probably speed the process up. Uh, almost certainly in the leather tanning process there are all sorts of chemicals used in that. And almost certainly some remain in the leather. It's not neutral once it's finished. Anyway, all of that needs to be cleaned up. I'll have to tidy up the edges where there's a bit of leather fibre sticking, sticking around the edges in case that prevents me sticking the leather down smoothly. 
but cleaning up is the next job. Okay, so cleaning up. So I'm using some uh, cigarette lighter fuel fluid on a cotton bud. And I just want to get rid of any traces of that green corrosion product. The usual recommended solution to Zeiss bumps or dealing with them is that once you've removed the Zeiss bumps and you've cleaned everything, you cover the head of the rivet in some lacquer to prevent the process happening again. I think that in practice the adhesive that I use to uh, put the leather down will seal things just as well as any lacquer could. And so I don't bother with the coats of lacquer. If you'd been using a more traditional adhesive, and here I'm thinking of the likes of uh, shellac, then quite likely coating something with lacquer first would be probably a, a useful thing to do. So here I'm just shaving that leather back the remnants of that leather on that surface so I want that surface to be comparatively smooth otherwise the leather won't sit back very smoothly you have to be very careful doing this um, if you slip with your scalpel you'll certainly take that black paint off the body edges And the paint was never stuck very well to the back of any of these retinas and it's because the metal is aluminium. Aluminium is not a particularly easy metal to stick paint to. Uh, best practice would be to use an etch primer which basically bites its way into the surface of the, the metal and then provides you with a a tooth for the light, put your undercoats and primers to stick to. More commonly when you strip the leather off a camera like this it would come off cleaner. You would be left with perhaps the glue layer or some of the glue layer. Sometimes not even that, sometimes it would strip right back to the metal. And this is a little bit unusual in having been stuck so well and the leather effectively losing its a lot of its surface staying stuck to that glue so firmly. When cameras have been stored in damp conditions you end up with corrosion forming underneath the leatherettes, um, underneath the glue in fact, 
and so the glue lets go very easily and the leatherettes often come off very cleanly or leather if it's leather Again, when you're working in areas like this, be aware that that scalpel is sharp and it will leave scars in that chrome edge if you slip and run across it. And there's even less chance of disguising them than there is of disguising scratches in the paint. Now I'm doing all this before I bother doing any of the cleaning on this body in preparation for reassembly because as you can see you create quite a mess from leather fibres, bits of glue and uh, be futile to clean the body up and then have to go through the process of removing all that rubbish afterwards. I think they'd used a fairly healthy amount of glue when they put this leather on here. And that's probably as far as I want to go. Some of that uh, paint is lifted there with that glue. Okay, that'll do. Now, Zeiss bumps on the front. Often with the Retina 2s, 2As, 1As, you'll see Zeiss bumps at this point. There's a rivet holding the um, strap lug on there. Often you'll end up with corrosion at that point. In this case, I don't see any, and I'm certainly not looking for trouble, so we're not going to try and move, lift the leather off the front. Um, having seen how well glued the leather was on the back, it's every likelihood it's glued just as well on the front and they are fragile and hard to get off in one piece even on a good day. My battery's going flat, I'm just going to have to change something. Okay, battery's changed and all back in gear again. Let's get a look at the size bumps on the base of this camera. Basically it's the same deal, it's where there are rivets and the dissimilar metals, the aluminium body and the brass of the rivet has created some corrosion and one of the corrosion products is that green mess that we see which I suspect is technically a soap because I seem to remember from Chemistry that a, uh, a what was what was said what was it was a soap is the sodium salt of a fatty acid and I'm sure that's what we've got in this case from the leather and the dissimilar metals. The rivets that we've got here in the base of the camera, these two, they hold a spring in place and the spring is the return spring for the catch for the front door. The other point that you get the Zeiss bumps forming is around here, around the uh, rewind button and that's because of those two brass screws that fit here and here. And again, you've got the same deal there, dissimilar metals. Curiously, you do not get the same problem with dissimilar metals where it is steel and aluminium. So our screws over here, which is steel, nickel-plated steel, you do not get it there. That looks good. I just need to brush that down, clean my tabletop, and we can 
re-glue the leatherette for the back because I don't and the base that can just be left flapping until we're ready to close that up. Alright, so I'll clean this leather down with some cigarette lighter fluid on a cotton bud and here I'm just wanting to remove any loose dust and any grease including finger grease from having been working on this and holding it that's good and any trace of that green scunge I'll do the same to the leather taking particular care where the ice bumps were is that uh, green stuff is soapy, waxy, probably won't stick to any adhesives and we need these areas to stick well. Now where those two biggest bumps were I'm just going to use some of this on a cotton bud. This is carbon tetrafluorin I think trichloromethylene nasty very good at stripping oil and I just want to get those two big bumps there strip any oil out of that so that my adhesive will stand a fair chance of sticking to it so toothpick Here's my adhesive, ADOS F2 it's called, you probably only get it in New Zealand, you might get something similar elsewhere. It's uh, great for gluing leather, rubber, things like that. It's the sort of thing used in the traditional footwear industry. Um, it's no good for PVC. It doesn't have the sufficient um, MEK to sort of give you the bite. So I'm just running plenty on there and I'm spreading that with a toothpick making sure I get cover to the edges. Probably been a bit generous there, I would say. Just a wee bit. And I'll take some of that, and where those big Zeiss bumps were, I'm just going to put some on the back of the camera itself because we want it all going for us when we get go to stick that back down. That leather at those points where those big bumps are, it's going to want to lift off. They're not going to want to stick down flat. Um, that leather is well stretched. So, putting the leather back on. This is the important thing. It says Kodak Retina. You don't want it to look like that. So you've got to make sure you've got it the right way up. Otherwise it'll be very disappointing. So I'm getting that settled in against the hinge at this end. Flattened all the way through. Press down those Zeiss bumps and any unevenness in terms of length is best at the at this end. And that's where it sort of floats out. You can't tell where it was supposed to start and stop here. Here it's tucked in against the hinge. It can't go in any closer than that. At the other end, where it ends up on that slope is not so important. Alright, 
So that's looking quite good. Now whether I can get that, those ice bumps to stay flat is the next important question. And I may not. I've certainly improved them because they're not sticking up as high as they once were. And I'm just checking here to make sure that the leather is down in the recess evenly as much as possible. That looks quite good. Now I'll just put a little bit of cigarette lighter fluid on a cotton bud and I'll just wipe that surface. Make sure I get that loose adhesive off that chrome. That's good. One of those bumps has gone away very well, the other one to a lesser extent. The one that was down the back here has pretty much disappeared. So, Zeiss bumps largely gone. And certainly you can't feel them with your finger. They were pretty prominent before. So now I can clean up that body ready for reassembly. Most of the mechanical components are in soaking in some degreaser at the moment. A product that's made for painters called uh, wax and grease remover and it's just soaking in a tin of it. And it's very good at softening up the old dried up hardened grease that you end up with on components. So here I'm just swabbing all the surfaces, making sure I've lifted up all dust and dirt, traces of old grease, and generally have this cleaned up ready to go. At the base, I'm cleaning this recess here where the film advance shaft fit and the end of the sprocket shaft with the rewind button and the rewind button catch just making sure that's all clean at the top of the camera this recess here where we, the film advance components sit making sure again that that's free from dust and dirt and old dried grease. This track is the track that the arm for the rangefinder travels along. As you fold the camera up, that arm has to go somewhere and it zips down that track back out of the way. When you open the front up, the arm pulls forward so that as it's in its working range, as you move the focus backwards and forwards, it's working in this part of the slot. That's where it's doing its job. By the time it gets to that corner, it's disconnected from the range finder, and that it can slide back down that track out of the way. And that's what happens when you fold the front of your camera. And turn my attention to the inside of the camera. Mostly here, I'm just working around the film advance components there, where they would come through. Often with a camera in this re recess here, where the take-up spool goes, 
you will find numerous film chips. Film chips being the little piece of film that used to be between the sprocket holes and was ripped out when people forced the winder when it reached the end of the film. Which was something that they shouldn't have been able to do because Kodak very cunningly put the frame count, made the frame counter mechanism in such a fashion that when the end of the last frame had been shot or when the end of the film had supposedly been reached, the film advance was locked so you shouldn't be able to strip out sprocket holes. In practice people didn't set that correctly and so coming to the end of the film was just as much a surprise as it was for people using other cameras without that feature. Now this pressure plate's got a bit of an odd look to it. Um, it's not really cleaning up. I don't know whether it's got a wax or something on it. I'm just going to have to have a go at that with something a bit more aggressive I think. It's got a funny feel to it. It's like there's something on there. Not just paint. It may have had film stuck to it at one some time in the past, and somebody has um, had to polish that surface to get rid of that the residue. That's certainly a possibility. If people have left a film in a camera for a very long time years or decades often the film will effectively melt or and stick to the pressure plate or the aperture here and not want to come off cleanly it's certainly got a bit of an odd look to it um, but it certainly this is no high points that should work quite well So I'll just wipe out that, the film uh, cassette recess. Check that the film rails are clean. These little semicircular recesses here, they, that's where the, the pressure plate, let's pop this under there so you can see it. That's where those little pieces on the pressure plate drop into and it locates the pressure plate, stops it floating so that it sits correctly in its aperture and holds the film down flat. So that body's cleaned up, that's ready to have the components put back into it and be rebuilt into a camera so we can pop that to one side. Next thing I would want to deal with would be this. This is the bellows struts and there's a few points to watch with this. This one's in quite good condition but they're not always so. 